I was talking to my friends at Pine Boards about the not fabulous experiences I had with this. This is the Raspberry Pi Foundation PoE hat for the Raspberry Pi 4. It has a built-in fan, which is neat, and this will give you power over Ethernet. If you've never heard of power over Ethernet, basically it's a network cable you plug in and it will take power from the network and, and run the device. That's really cool, assuming that you have a switch that you know does that. Access points, wireless access points, um, and security cameras and things like that are the most popular devices that use power over Ethernet because it's great. You can just put an access point anywhere you can run a network cable. It's low voltage. A lot of the time low voltage cables are uh, much less regulated or not regulated at all in terms of like code enforcement or anything like that. You can just pull a wire somewhere and you're good to go. Whereas if you pull a permanent power cable, you know, there's code, somebody has to sign off on something, there might have to be a drawing somewhere. But I was complaining about this and then they sent me a box of goodies and their goodies actually fix the problems that I had with this. So let's dive in, let's take a look. Now, why do I have the Home Assistant voice thing? I did a video on the Home Assistant voice. This is really uh, fun things in the Internet of Things vein. And also, if you don't really know a ton about the technology or nuts and bolts, but there's someone in your life that does, this kind of thing makes a good present almost always. So this was basically a prototype device. This was half-baked, this was not ready. And I didn't really care to follow the play-by-play. -play. This has since been fixed. There was, a, there was a whole kerfuffle with the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It, it's not a thing now. But I was really excited when it came out. I bought it and it didn't work. It made the Raspberry Pi unreliable. I also tried to do PoE for my PDP-11 back here, which is it's a Raspberry Pi version of a PDP-11, but it actually runs a PDP-11 operating system. So you can actually hook up a serial terminal to the PDP-11 and experience the PDP-11 as it was, you know, in grade school. You know, that is neither here nor there. I just want to run it off the network. What do you want? So Pine Boards sells accessories for the Raspberry Pi. And one of the things that I have a problem with is that there's the Raspberry Pi compute module and the Raspberry Pi itself. And a problem is perhaps too strong a word. When I'm working on things like my home assistant thing, I had considered using Raspberry Pi. Everybody does, but I didn't find it to be reliable enough. So I was like, okay, maybe it's the USB-C power brick or power draw or something. The PoE thing is probably more reliable because a lot of reasons. A lot of USB-C power bricks are, are sketchy and any little power anomaly might mean that they deliver weird power. And so I was like, okay, I got a PoE hat. It didn't help. And so I just got frustrated and replaced it with a mini PC as I'm one to do. And now everything actually runs as a high availability virtual machine because that's how you do it. But the Raspberry Pi 5 has a significant amount of compute horsepower versus the Raspberry Pi 4. And a setup like this makes sense for a lot of people and it uses way less power. So the first thing that I'll show you is the Module 5 IO PoE Plus. And this is, this is the one that I've been using the most. And so I've got my compute module this is a Raspberry Pi 5 compute module. This is different than Raspberry Pi 5 because if you just buy this, you can't do anything with this on its own. So if you're buying this as a gift for somebody and you don't really exactly know what you're doing, don't get them just this. You have to get this plus a carrier board of some kind. Now the, the fanciest one in my opinion is Modulo 5 IO PCIe because it has the same breakout, but it gives you an M.2 slot, which is a PCIe M.2 and it gives you power over ethernet and it gives you some nice USB and it gives you two HDMI as well as a micro SD slot if your compute module doesn't have onboard storage. There's different versions of the compute module. There's different amounts of RAM of course, but you can also get onboard EMMC storage. If you don't get onboard EMMC storage, then something like this, you can use your micro SD slot and it's great. But even if you have onboard storage on a board like this, you can also use your M.2. Breaking out the PCIe lanes from the Raspberry Pi 5 is a lot of fun and uh, opens the doors to doing a lot of really off-label things. You should check out Jeff Geerling's video, his ongoing quest slash saga of uh, getting a graphics card to work with the Raspberry Pi 5. is exciting, depressing, and a black hole of time. Ain't nobody got time for that. So you combine the compute module with the board and then you have a, a whole computer basically. Oh, and by the way, uh, PoE, I haven't had one glitch or dropout with my Compute Module 5 on this with PoE. Zero. So, yeah. But it was a known issue that the PoE was a little sketchy over there, so I'm not, not breaking any new ground there, I'm just saying. Now, the setup here, we boot from the network. I've done videos from that in the past, and this is really amazing because you just plug in a Raspberry Pi to the network, 
and it boots up and says, oh, I've never seen this MAC address before, but it wants to be a Raspberry Pi. You can provision and configure the Raspberry Pi over the network. It's glorious. That's a different video. You should check that out. And that's more toward what I want in terms of turning the Raspberry Pis into an appliance. Maybe I could turn these into a power over Ethernet smart screen. E-paper displays that you just you know have in your living room that gives you status updates like the weather or the last people that were on your porch or uh, the temperature in the basement or if there's any kind of water anomalies going on or what the readings of the sensors are. And so, yeah, that, that, that's it's a lot of fun to prototype that on something like this. But this is kind of bulky and you don't really want this to live inside you know, an e-ink display or whatever. So the idea is that you move the compute module around and the compute modules are relatively standardized. Now the compute module five and the compute module four, they're not backward compatible, but I also want to show you this. This is the Pineboard Modulo four and the Pineboard's Modulo five. And so these are designed for the Raspberry Pi compute module four and five but it gives you a physical form factor very similar to a normal Raspberry Pi. This is brilliant, and I think, you know, if it were not for the Raspberry Pi Foundation trying to target the $35, $45, $55 price points, this is how they should do it, because this is a, a reasonable development platform, and then you can just take your compute module off of this and actually put it on the thing that you're going to use, and that's great. And then if something goes wrong, you can just take the compute module off of your e-ink POE LCD display, put it on the compute module and see what's going on. These compute modules are not POE. Usually you have to have something like this big transformer if you're going to have a, a POE module. But these are not POE or anything like that. They'll take external USB-C power. They've got the standard micro HDMI type connection that we've all come to know and despise. You also get your ribbon cable breakouts over here. This uses the new high density style. And then you've also got a, a weird little PCIe header here. PCIe header, ooh, yeah. So these breakout modules will give you PCIe connection. You've also got your micro, micro SD on the back if you need that because of your particular compute module configuration. If you don't have onboard storage on your compute module. Now, check this out. The Hat Drive Nano. That is also a tiny M.2. You could use a 2280 with this, but it's really not recommended. You get your one measly PCIe lane from this breakout board and it gives you a status and that connects via ribbon cable to there. And so this comes with all of the standoff and mounting hardware that you need, including the tiny, tiny little ribbon cable for your, uh, your PCIe lane. And there you go. If you were really gonna use a 2280, there's this kind of a hat drive as well. So this is just, Again, it will use the same PCIe breakout connection, but this is much more appropriate. Then you can put your 2280 on there, and it's connected with the tiny fragile ribbon cable. There's also the Hat Drive POE Plus. So this is a version of the hat that has POE and an M.2 connector, and still requires a little ribbon connector. So this is a lot of fun for augmenting a standard Raspberry Pi, not the compute module. And finally, if you're thinking, okay, I can turn the M.2 into a PCIe slot and do something creative, nah, they're way ahead of you. If you're actually interested in hacking PCIe devices on to the Raspberry Pi, may I present the Pineboard PCIe. So you've got, you've got your physical X4 slot. It is open-ended there, so you can use something fancy. It takes 12 volt input, but you could also use a power supply input. And yeah, look at that. You have a PCIe slot that is going to do whatever arbitrary peripheral that you may or may not have a, a fun weekend trying to get going. So that's why I say it's like, if you know somebody that's super technical, this is sort of a fun present because it's like, hey, I got you a compute module, a board, and this PCIe breakout thing. You can build stuff and then it turns into a black hole of time, which is fun for some people. So thanks, Pine Boards. And uh, be aware that these Lego components exist for building your home automation because if the Raspberry Pi 5 is reliable and doesn't overheat and so on and so forth, then it could be really amazing at the center of your home automation stuff for everything except AI stuff because it doesn't really have the horsepower to do large language models and AI and things, but it'll run Home Assistant fine. It'll run our Home Assistant voice speaker basically okay, although they've got their own Home Assistant hardware now that has some optimizations and so, but again, Raspberry Pi compute module is sort of in more stuff than you realize because you can build your own boards to do whatever you want around the compute module and have the familiar fun Linux interface and experience and the giant ecosystem of supported software. That's the really amazing thing here is that the Raspberry Pi ecosystem is so far ahead of everything else in terms of software support and dudes hacking on stuff to try to get things working. 
versus basically every other embedded board. And so the limitations of the, you know, a standard Raspberry Pi aside, it's like, okay, you just use a compute module and then break out what you need. Do away with the built-in USB 3 ports, reclaim some PCIe IO, use that for storage, use that for uh, a PCIe slot, use that for whatever. It makes sense. It's a lot of fun hobby. And we're doing this kind of stuff on the forum. There's a whole little mini community over there. So join us and uh, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. I'm Willis Level 1. It's been a quick look at some fun stuff from Pine Boards. I'm signing out and I'll see you later.